All right, so this is time for the Heliod deck list and how to beat it. So first, I'm going to go through the deck and talk through what it does. The first thing to note is the land. The only land that is special about Heliod is Gavany Township. This is used to make sure when Heliod goes into its mid-range or aggro strategy that it puts up constantly increasing pressure. Because only 4 mana, which is really easy to achieve in Heliod, puts a 1-1 counter on each creature that Heliod decks control. With Conclave Mentor, this gets out of hand really, really fast. So if you have land destruction and you see Gavany Township, take care of it immediately. Heliod does not have recursion, especially for lands. So, once we get past this, let's go to the obligatory zero draw. Two Walking Ballistas. These Walking Ballistas are one of the three combos. Can be played at any time if a Heliod deck feels it's more correct to play the Walking Ballista out to use it as pressure. They will do it and you will die to it. These are must take care of the minute you see them because Heliod can grow them very easily and you don't want to be caught out of a Heliod deck having a walking blist on too and then them suddenly going cast Heliod, no response, activate Heliod, target walking blist with lifelink and then you're dead. Then you've got for mana ramp we've got one Oriok champion, one, Oriok champion, one noble hierarch. This is just here, Exalted is just fine, it makes beaters bigger, and it helps mana ramp in both relevant colors, green and white. The blue doesn't matter. No Heliod deck is running blue. Then additionally, there are four copies of Arbor Elf. These are to combo, obviously, with the four copies of Utopia Sprawl. This provides the turn to Collected Company, which is feared and it's if you see turn two collected company and nothing about it most of the time you're just about to lose the game nothing much you can really do about that but that's all at the one drop slot at the two drop the first thing to go over is three copies of conclave mentor this is what hardened scales on a stick and when it dies it gains life for heliod so it's kind of a catch-22 of killing this you want to kill it as fast as possible because Hardened Scales reduces the mana cost of the combo and gives one of the three lines that goes infinite. It does this with Spike Feeder and Heliod to make creatures of irrelevant size that will just kill you if one connects. This is one of the ways that Heliod can beat control decks and other mid-range type decks that don't lose through infinite life. They'll just make creatures that you have to keep blocking and eventually one will get through. Then, obviously, in the you-can't-play-red-or-black decks, there are five. Some decks are running four Oriok Champion main board. I'm, and most decks are actually, some decks are running three Oriok Champions main board because there's two Sanctifier and Vex. So Oriok Champion also helps in the combo by making it two mana less for the Walking Ballista route because it'll gain one life, trigger Heliod, and put a counter on. Sanctifier and Vex also has the benefit of these activate Heliod as a creature very easily. And that's something to always be worried about and cautious is that sometimes Heliod will just be turned on light and swing at you as a 5-5. Five five. It is a very fast clock once that happens. But other than that, you see these pretty much in every white deck, so if you know if you can play around them, great. If you can't, you're just gonna lose to them. Then that's it for the two drop slot. Now it's to the incredibly bloated 3-drop slot, starting with the man himself, Heliod. This is what seems like a linchpin of the deck, but really isn't, and I'll tell you why. So while Heliod himself goes infinite with the rest of the deck, and is the main reason why the deck is played, the deck doesn't need Heliod. I've won over half my games without ever seeing Heliod once. That is a big sign to tell you that Heliod is not your major concern most of the time. Only Heliod decks should really be running Deicide, and this is why, is that, cool, you took care of Heliod, and you took all of my Heliods away. I still have Conclave Mentor, Spike Feeder, Walking Ballista, Ranger Captain of Eos, 
and even Solitude that it can be hard casted. All those will still just beat you down, especially with Gavany Township. So while getting rid of Heliods can help lengthen the amount of time the game goes on, it's not always going to win you the game, and that's what is important, is that you really still have to be on your guard, because Collected Company into Spike Feeder Conclave Mentor will just end the game instead. But if you can get rid of all four of them, great. Do it. Get rid of Heliods as fast as you can. That'll help you lengthen the game and give you a slightly better chance of beating it. Then you've got four Spike Feeders. The good old main combo piece of the deck. This is really Spike Feeder Collecting Company, not Heliod. So if in the cases you are running Pithing Needle Effects, you hit Spike Feeder first because Spike Feeder is present in two out of the three combos. And if you hit Heliod, Spike Feeder doesn't care. But also, if you hit Spike Feeder, it can't combo with Conclave Mentor to keep growing itself. Because its second first ability is two mana, remove a plus one plus one counter from Spike Feeder, put a counter on target creature. Which means that with Conclave Mentor, it can keep growing itself for two mana, faster than Walking Ballista. That's the scary thing. Then, some decks are running three, but I am running two Skyclave Apparition. We'll get into that later. These are just Heliod's main deck removal for, let's say you're running Collector Ooze, so you're for some reason running Stony Silence, or anything that disrupts Heliod. This is the main deck way to get around it. Again, three mana, you've got time if you remove something early, but it's not going to stay forever. Can be Collected Company into, remember that. All the creatures except one. Then there are four ranger captain of eos these are houses of cards not only is it a three three for three so it's got a great stat line for the cost it tutors a walking ballista or arbor elf if walking blisters are not available but it also has a third really good thing is that's the non-creature silence effect if that is being activated on your turn, it means the Heliod deck doesn't want you doing something on your turn with non-creature spells. If they're doing it on their turn, they're likely about to go off. They're either going to protect Collected Company, or they're going to be protecting for Heliod, Spike Feeder, Heliod, Walking Ballista. Then, one of the mainstays of the deck, four Collected Companies. You know it, it just can win on the spot, turn two, turn three, turn four... Coco can just win the game. So it's a counter if possible. And then this is what causes Skyclave Apparition to be a two of and the only non collected companyable creature in the deck. Solitude. Just free creature exile can be cast as a 3 2 with lifelink. It's all around really good for Heliod. The fact that it can't be collected companyed into doesn't matter. Always watch out for this because it can and will kill you. If you attack and think you won, and then Solitude comes out off of being evoked. Or even just hard cast. Five mana is not that big of an ask for this deck. So, now we're on to the sideboard options. So, one of the things that I run that I'll probably go up to two of, because I really like it, and something you need to watch out for, is Sanctum Prelate. So, Sanctum Prelate can be collected company in two, which is the big reason why it's available as an option. And can name between 0, 1, and 3. Or sometimes whatever number it needs to to stop you from winning. This is really powerful. If it names 0 and you're playing a Cascade deck, you're done. Because the Living End, Crushing Footfalls, can't be cast. They're going to get stuck. If it names 3, that means your Archmage's Charms, your Force of Negation, your Teferis, they're gone. End of story. Could name 2 to stop you from Deicides if they know you have one or any other two mana non-creature spell could name one to stop one mana removal, which is very strong. So basically it's a jack of all trades deal. And especially if there's two out, can pretty much just stop you from ever casting your answers. So you, if you see one, you need to deal with Sanctum Prelate and it puts you in that bind of you just use removal and Sanctum Prelate and now you have another thing to reuse removal for. Then sideboard, there's another copy of Skyclave Apparition. If there's non-creature spells that need to be, or non-creature permanents that need to be dealt with, Skyclave Apparition is going to come in, such as Teferis or other things like that. 
Obviously, two Veil of Summers, green c Cryptic Command is always good. Uh, draws a card, protects a combo. You've got, in the cases where we need just more removal, three Path to, ex path to Exile. Just Path to Exile, one mana removal, not explanation needed, just really good. Two Void Mirrors for the Cascade deck, sometimes against Tron. So if you're, for some reason, running a Tron-based deck, make sure you have Yavamaya or Urborg. Most Heliod lists do run a Yavamaya, so always be cautious of that when they drop one. But it's just Void Mirror is really good. Choke. This really puts a lot of pain on the blue decks for Heliod. Something that you're going to have to counter and get removed. See, a theme here is that a lot of the sideboard options are intended to make you have to use your removal early, your counter spells early. So if you're going against Heliod in the second, third game, you really need a lot of removal against this deck. Counter spells and traditional removal, both. Then you've got your obvious stamping sphere. If you're running Blitz or Tron, that's just going to come in and hose you. Got to be cautious of it. You got to make sure you know that it's coming. And then if you're running Mill or a Graveyard deck that's not black or red, there's two Wheels of Sun and Moon. These things will stop you from being able to do anything against Heliod in the terms of Mill or even your own Graveyard by just putting it on the bottom of the library. Always powerful. Gonna be a house. You're not gonna win off of one of those resolving, usually. So, ways to beat Heliod. So... As I hinted at earlier, you're going to want a lot of removal. Remove, just land removal, creature removal, non-creature removal, you need a lot. So, the combos. These are the four main pieces. We've got Spike Feeder, Heliod, Conclave Mentor, Walking Ballista. So... If you can get rid of four permanents to begin with, if your deck loses to infinite life, get rid of Spike Feeder first. Don't get rid of Heliod first if you lose to infinite life. The reason being is that Spike Feeder on its own can just come in, gain four life, block a creature, gain even more life. It's between a gain four life and gain enough. Sometimes even just gaining the 4 life is enough against you. So if you have, for some reason, the ability to remove all 4 Spike Feeders from a Heliod's deck, do it. Don't even think twice. Just remove Spike Feeder first. It's going to cause a lot more pain than removing Heliod. Because again, if you remove Heliod, you've still got Walking Blisses that can be cast. And that's fine. Heliod makes a lot of mana really fast, really easily. So it's not hard to pump up a Blister or cast it for a lot. Still got Spike Feeder and Conclave Mentor and Gavany Township and can just switch plans of, oh, I can no longer combo. Sure, let's just go to a mid-range or aggro strategy. That's what makes Heliod so difficult to play against is that it can shift gears flawlessly and really, really quickly. So, your order of need to deal with ASAP, Spike Feeders, then Heliod, then Walking Ballista, then Conclave Mentor. These are the order of which you need to disrupt. Sure, getting rid of all four Heliods is going to be always a good thing. It's never going to be bad to get rid of Heliods, but it will be better to get rid of Spike Feeder first. Then you want to deal with Walking Ballista, which... Again, there's only two of. It can't be collected companyed into, unlike Spike Feeder Heliod. So it, but it can be tutored. That's the thing. So you'll most of the time know when a Walking Ballista is coming. But the fact that it just can happen is the scary part. So in this order, if you're going to be running Pithing Needles, you have to get two Pithing Needles down before you're safe. Your order of naming cards will be... Spike Feeder, Heliod, Walking Ballista. That will be your order of Pithing Needles. Because this is the reasoning. If you name Heliod, Spike Feeder, Clonclave Mentor, they, those two combos are still left intact. You name Walking Ballista, same effect. 
you name spike feeder now it's just shifting to heliod walking ballista so it's a lot slower of a combo requiring six mana or four mana with a setup board state that is minimum too if there's no heliod out then the combo costs between seven and nine mana so on top of all that other ways to beat heliod stop it from gaining life roiling vortex ley line of punishment uh, skull crack all those can delay heli skull crack delays heliod you may be able to get the win off of it, but Roiling Vortex, Ley Line of Punishment are going to be better bets because it's repeatable. If you are able to keep up two mana with Roiling Vortex, Heliod will likely never be able to gain the life. As long as you can activate Roiling Vortex more times than Heliod can activate, and more times than Spike Feeder or Walking Ballista can activate, you're good to go. But... Other than that, there's really not much more to let you know about this deck other than be very cautious of how you're disrupting the deck so that when it shifts to that mid-range or aggro, it's not shifting to a plan that just beats you outright. And always make sure that you are keeping up with removal. If you fall behind and you allow Heliod to get that inch, it will start quickly overtaking you. You have to beat it back at every step. Otherwise... You're just going to let Heliod play solitaire, basically. Other than that, just let me know if you have any other questions, comments, concerns. And yeah, talk to you later.